Hi and welcome to another episode of Portex Tech Lightning. In today's episode I will talk about the Azure Pairing Services. I will explain topics such as hot and cold potato and how it applies to Azure. For any Azure architects, it's important to have a high level overview and understanding of all these concepts. So let's dive into the technology and start now. There is quite some interesting terminology thrown around in this area. Let's, let's put them out there, define them and see how they play their part in the Azure pairing services. First, we start with the main topic, Azure pairing services. At an eagle eye overview, this is a networking service that enhances the connectivity to the Microsoft cloud services, such as Microsoft 365, Azure Dynamics, and any Microsoft services connected to the public internet. When you connect to Azure over the internet, your traffic will take the most efficient route towards the end destination in the cloud. Now we will move to defining our favorite vegetable, namely the potato. We have two types of potato. We have the hot potato and we have the cold potato. So imagine we have two ISPs, both which have worldwide networks. The first ISP have their headquarters in the US and their network spans all the way to Japan. The second ISP have their headquarters in Japan and their network also spans all the way across the US. Now, if a network packet needs to travel from the US to a service hosted by the J Japan ISP, there are two ways to handle this. One, it can be handled as a super hot potato. So when the packet starts at the US, much like holding a hot potato, the ISP will try to get rid of it as soon as possible. They immediately transfer the packet to the Japan ISP network in the US. From there on, it's traveled through its own global network and to the destination. When we're dealing with a cold potato, we can hold on to the network packet much longer. In the same scenario as above, the package needs to go from the US ISP to the destination in Japan. It will travel using the US ISP global network until it's closest to the destination's entry point. Only there it will be sent to the Japan ISP network. As you can imagine, the cold potato routing is usually the most expensive for an ISP. To summarize this and how it works in half, Azure inbound traffic to Azure generally uses the hot potato routing mechanism. The traffic from the customer first hits the nearest Microsoft Edge point of presence. From there, it will use the Microsoft global network until it gets to its destination. Hot potato routing for traffic from Azure means that the traffic goes to the nearest edge point of presence of the Microsoft data center out to the internet where it transits back to the customer. Cold potato routing for traffic from Azure means that it uses the Microsoft global network until it hits, hits the nearest edge POP closest to the customer. Well, enough talk about vegetables, but you see the magic and how it works. Um, so how do, do we apply this to the Azure pairing services? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that this is not related to Express Route as it doesn't define connectivity to and from Azure using a private line. On the contrary, this is all about how to handle the routing over the internet. Microsoft, they have partnered with several service providers all around the globe. On the left hand side, we have our internal enterprise network. We have a connection to the internet which goes through an ISP. On the internet, uh, Microsoft have several network point of presence locations pop. Then we have the resources located in the Azure cloud. With the Azure pairing services, you can register network prefixes, which are actually a bundle of IP addresses. So you can say that these prefix prefixes should use a specific Microsoft point of presence. This means that traffic to and from Azure with those network addresses will use the assigned POP. So as you can see, this is a great way to optimize traffic routes for enterprises with have, which have an internet's first access policy. So this is not only useful for Azure, but all the public cloud resources available by, by Microsoft, such as Microsoft 365, Dynamics and more. 
So how do we configure this in Azure? Well, I'm glad you asked that because we will have a look at documentation first and then do a short demo how to configure it. Now on to documentation on the Microsoft website. The link into the Microsoft documentation is of course in the description of this video. So you will be able to find this back. On the landing page you see, we see information about the service, how it works and how to actually implement it. Under concepts, uh, we can see what Microsoft calls the pairing service partners. These are the ISP, actually Internet Exchange providers and SDSCI providers, which Microsoft have partnered with to provide the Azure pairing services. Let's open up the Azure portal and see how we configure it in there. To create the Azure pairing service, we click on create a resource. We enter pairing service and there we find something. And we click on create, we specify the resource group and the instance name. Uh, the instance name is just identifier of the Azure resource. Uh, so pick one which adheres to your naming conventions. Next up is the screen for the configuration information. We specify a country. Uh, state, province, and then we get into a list of providers that we can pick from. Choose the provider partner that you have selected and chosen for the pairing services here. We also have to enter a primary pairing location. Then we have to select a backup pairing location, which is used in case there's a failure of the primary. We enter a name to identify the, the pairing service. Now the prefix uh, that actually specifies the IP range which will use the pairing service. Here we can, for example, enter 10 uh, 24 Now the prefix key, this is a special key which you should have received by the partnered ISP or IXP. This key allows Microsoft to validate that the prefix and provider who have allocated this data. Assuming you have entered the data correctly, this is actually all which is required for the configuration. On the next screens, Microsoft will review the information we've entered. Let's uh, summarize the benefits of this service. Now, uh, you can use the best public routing over the internet to the Microsoft Azure Cloud Services for optimal performance and real reliability. You have the ability to select the preferred service partner connect to, the, to connect to the Microsoft Cloud. You have traffic insights such as latency reporting and prefix monitoring. Optimum network hops from the Microsoft Cloud is something you define. So I'm sure you all agree with me uh, about this one. It was pretty cool information that has been ma made available to us. Remember the con concept, holding a super hot, hot potato, you want to deliver it and get rid of it as soon as possible. A cold potato on the other hand, you can keep in your hand until you almost reach the destination. In Azure, setting up an Azure peering service to optimize the routing over the internet, uh, you can do that to the different public services. Until next time, thank you for watching, take care, see you.